scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I'd like you to declare that you will never go back the way you came. Can you turn it into prayer? Let it be from the depth of your heart. Someone be angry enough and declare. Father, I have celebrated your hand upon many. Tonight is my turn. Declare by faith. Someone pray. Tonight is my turn in the name of Jesus. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do all. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're you have called tonight a miracle service let it answer to its name in the mighty name of Jesus that all who have come tonight believing in your power will live graciously ministered to in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that none under the sound of my voice will return back in shame you believe that shout a louder amen How do you know you have received a miracle? How do you know your situation has changed? How do I know that I have received a miracle? Because you see, miracles do not just end just by faith believing. There must be a manifestation to it. Are we together? Yeah. The end of faith is a performance. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. It says, and we beheld. It is not a true miracle if you do not behold. At the end of it, you, you believe before beholding. But at the end of it, you must behold that this is what God has done. Somebody I'd like you to declare that you will not only believe, you will behold. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I will behold. That healing must be made manifest, I will behold. That change of story, that turnaround, I decree and declare, it will not just stop as a reality in the realm of the spirit. It must be made manifest and I must behold. I must behold in the name of Jesus Christ 
Hallelujah. Listen before you sit. You see, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul, in fact, chapter 1, Paul was teaching the believers and he prayed a very serious prayer. He prayed that they would comprehend the depth of power that was released when Christ was raised from the dead. Because the way faith is produced in the believer is through revelation. If you do not have access to revelation, there is no possibility of acquiring faith because it comes by hearing. So Paul is saying that you will comprehend the depth of power that was released when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That means the kind of power that was exerted to dislodge death, to dislodge hell, to dislodge the grave. Are we together now? defying their grip over Jesus and still brought him back to life. In other words, if you comprehend the kinds of forces that were warded off for Jesus to resurrect, you will see how small your situation is in light of the power that was exerted to raise him up. That's why I raised that song, that in truth there is nothing that he cannot do. And you are here tonight, I pray, that you did not come tonight with any unbelief, wondering, will God change my story? You know why we take testimonies here before the word comes? Because the testimony of Jesus, the Bible declares, is the spirit of prophecy. That when you listen to people, look at that. I was so blessed by that, that professor, that dear uh, Zimbabwean American, with a PhD, but just walking in a store, opening boxes. But when the God of heaven the jealous one who can arise over men. Now she works with Jeff Bezos. But if God were to tell her probably that one day you'll be working with the wealthiest man on earth, it looks the same way God can be telling someone you will walk out of this service tonight and you, you will not even believe that it was the same you who came. I pray that you will not doubt God tonight. hallelujah we give testimonies to let people know that God is still working because there is a theology there is there is an orientation that comes by reason of pain and prolonged situations when 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 situations um, keep people limited for a long time it is able to suggest an orientation to them that makes it look like God is not mighty. So people can just shout amen just for the sake of it. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. We are living testaments of his wonder. And let me tell you, we are not discussing a God who did it before. Nor the God who will do it again. We are talking of God who is doing it now. Do you believe that? Welcome to our miracle service for the month of April. May the Lord bless you and do you good tonight in Jesus' name. Greet someone as warm as you can and then be seated. I leave it to your creativity to welcome them as you see best. God bless you. Please be seated. Apostle Paul Ahmed, God bless you. Such an honor to have you around with us again. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. And to all who have traveled from outside of this nation, by the way, if you had to travel outside of Nigeria to be here, please, I want you, I know that um, you've had a session, but I want you to stand so we just tell you a big God bless you. Anyone stand, all our international guests, God bless you and any other person. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? <laughs> Hallelujah. It is incredible to know that people traveling week in, week out, literally, not just during the miracle service, but um, you'll be surprised to know how far these people had to stretch and travel to be here. God will not disappoint you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Please be seated two very important announcements and then um, we'll just release our faith and allow the Lord to bless us even this night.
Hallelujah. Um, two very important announcements as regards our conference upcoming. We are really happy for what God is doing. It is an honor and a privilege to be part of God's apostolic program for the nations. Um, now, the first announcement is, is a good one. Um, this is particularly to all those who have registered, but for whatever reason may not be able to attend again online. Now, um, we got the biggest auditorium we could find because our intention is to be able to reach as many people, but um, the venue is packed full right now and there are still so many people who need to be part of it. It's the largest venue. It's a 21,000 seater and we've exhausted everything, the limit. Um, and right now, we're in a serious situation where we need a lot of help. And the help here is that if for any reason you registered, I'm speaking especially to our UK family, please, if you registered for the conference and for whatever reason you may not be able to make it um, on site, we will want to please request if you can relinquish your tickets so that we open up doors for a few other people to register. We're having delegates coming literally from all across the globe and um, we're trying to manage space. So this is a situation we're dealing with now. And uh, so please let me make this appeal. Let me make this call, um, particularly for those who registered, probably the earliest people to register. And for whatever reason, you are not able to make it on site. Probably you'll be following online. Please do well to avail your tickets so that we can open a room for more people. Um, and as you do this, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. You can always contact our public relations department and our media department so that we know that these spaces are available and then um, we'll see how we'll open that space. And then for those who have been calling, please be patient. Our people are working around the clock to make sure that everyone is attended to. You may need to be patient. I have received text messages and, and calls from people saying, Apostle, you have to find a way out. We're not registered, but we intend to be there. So please, um, we're a responsible ministry. Just allow us some time to do some housekeeping, and I'm sure that um, we'll make available whatever space we can squeeze out to find. But then you also have to be attentive, follow our social media platforms so that if and when we open up for any space that is available, you can take advantage of it. So that's the first announcement. As you do so, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. The second um, is for people who have requested if they can be allowed to use their homes and various places as viewing centers. Um, I, I don't have, you see, the way God has built us, we're more, we're more concerned about souls being saved, lives being reached, especially in a conference like this. And it does not matter whether we're doing it in Abuja here or in the UK or any other part of the world. So yes, we'll be open to allow viewing centers, but the only issue, and I'm responding to this officially now, please, we would not want to hear that any viewing center is collecting money from anyone to connect to the conference. If you are availing your homes, your churches, uh, and I'm saying this especially to the international community, you just feel like we do now. There are people right now uh, having, you know, probably hundreds of viewing centers across the globe connecting um, to help people follow Koinonia now. If that is what you intend to do, you have our blessings on it. But please, we will not be happy to hear that any persons or any viewing centers are charging people to follow the conference, not even the auditorium. We have not charged any man. We owe no man nothing but love, and we also want people to be comfortable as they follow. Uh, we're only doing registrations for the purpose of organization. Are we together now? So all viewing centers um, air our teachings. You have the liberty to do so. Television stations, 
you can be at Liberty, contact our media department and we'll give you the liberty to air the conference if you want to. But provided God's people will not be put under any financial duress, please. We're people of integrity and we may take measures as appropriate if we do find out that any persons are charging people and manipulating people. This is something that is against our culture as a ministry but then it will be an honor to have people across the globe make their homes their various platforms available for the conference i have told you that we are a very pro kingdom ministry our greatest promotion is not joshua selman not even koinonia it's a privilege for us to be part of the revival that is sweeping across the nations from Africa to the ends of the earth. And we're not alone in this. So it is an honor uh, for us to have many people just support what it is that we're doing, especially by making the uh, live coverage available. So please and please, again, one last time, let me reiterate that for those of you who have requested to be given the liberty to air the programs will give you that liberty your viewing centers particularly for all other platforms please do contact our media department and our media and productions team both here and our productions team in uk they'll be glad to advise you appropriately i'm saying this because regions have laws they have broadcast laws and it's important for us to work within the jurisdiction of what um, is permitted Hallelujah. Let's hold hands together with someone by your left and right. And in one minute, let's just invest prayer into the UK conference. Just make declarations of faith while you are seated. And for our family following from across the globe, I'd like us to just declare in the name of Jesus that it will be an outpouring indeed upon Europe, UK, the neighboring nations, we are coming in the name of the Lord. He said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That there will be a reign of salvation, a reign of revival, that mighty apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors, men and women will be ignited with genuine apostolic fire. In the name of Jesus, declare over the team living from here to the UK, declare over delegates who are coming from all across the globe, and many around and across Europe who have traveled already and those who are on their way, I'd like us to declare that it will be a seamless program. No hassles, no issues, not with government, not with law enforcement agents. Is someone praying? The conference is everybody's business. Decree and declare. Pray over the workforce. Pray over the spiritual climate across Manchester, the UK, and Europe in general, that in the name of Jesus, the fire that has been lost for many, many years and decades, that it will please the Lord to use this conference to reignite again the sound of revival. We're praying as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're praying as a global family that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, curses, yokes, foundational covenants that have bound people, territories, and nations would come to an end. The power and influence broken over Europe. There will be an emergence of people, young and old, bearing that light and that fire of salvation and revival once again. This we decree, this we declare. We agree by faith that in the name of Jesus, this will be our experience. That this conference will answer to its name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right, so let me have your attention. We're here for the miracle service. And I came here with my heart really boiling um, and insisting that for someone who came here taking God seriously that you would not go back the way you came in the name of Jesus 
and for whole families who have come here asking will God visit us let me answer you in advance God will not only visit you he will surprise you amen. you believe that shout a louder amen, amen. hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I'm sensing that someone is being healed from peptic ulcer peptic ulcer I don't know who that is but the power of God is coming on someone who has suffered peptic ulcer this is what I just got that that impression in my spirit you have suffered particularly peptic ulcer this has caused a lot of of discomfort this is someone you know you have it in the name of Jesus wherever you are I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead let there be healing for you now Amen. let there be healing for you now Amen. in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone coughing throwing up something I don't know what it is but this is what I'm seeing. This is like something demonic in that person's body. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, every planting that is not by my God, I command that demonic planting, whatever it is, let it be uprooted from your body now. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I thought I would announce it later, but I saw this in my, I was just praying very briefly, in fact, while preparing, and I don't know if it's inside or outside, but there's someone you came with a walking aid, like a crutch. I just saw that vision now, again, repeated. I want you to lift it and stand up. Whether you're outside, your, your crutch, your walking aid, lift it and begin to walk. Whether you are outside any of the overflows, please lift it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Walk. Walk. Walk right to the front. Don't be afraid. Walk. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. What God has prepared for me So I submit to his work Until Christ be formed in me No I has seen No ear has heard What God has prepared for me seeing people outside the Lord is showing me miracles happening outside crutches crutches miracles I'm seeing this outside please don't force them just make sure they are strengthened hallelujah particularly outside if they are not able to stand just give them somewhere to sit but this is what God is doing don't be afraid we're not we're not acting it here hallelujah number two there is somebody who came here um, I'm seeing I don't know if it's a neck a neck a, a neck a collar or something to support yourself you could not move your neck this is what I'm seeing move it now come please check yourself whether you are inside or outside Don't be afraid. <laughs> Check your neck. Your, if you could not move your neck, please move it now. Move it now. You could not move your neck, whether you're inside or outside. Please, let's have a few officials. There should be one of the ministers outside so that you help manage those outside, any of them, so that you don't just um, punish people for nothing. Make sure that people are touched and healed. Hallelujah. In this miracle, in this ministry, we are not only, there is a grace called the walking of miracles. Hallelujah. The walking of miracles is not just people healed 
who will be announced you will watch it happen as it is happening is is the walking of miracles hallelujah now i'm i'm seeing somebody who has been is it coughing out this is what i'm seeing in my vision coughing out blood consistently will soon be seated but i just saw this in my vision and the lord wants to heal that person right now right now coughing out blood all of you please lift your lift the crutches whatever it is that you came with already god has done what happened to you madam can someone help her please don't leave her standing she looks yes i had two hip replacements um i'm uh, an ss patient and i came here for the lord to change my um, genotype from ss to aa and it's been causing all these problems not sure I, I got what she's saying. Someone um, help. I'm an SS patient. Sickle oh, you're an SS anemia. sickle cell anemia. Yes. Oh, sir. dear. And I have had two hip replacements on the same. You've had two hip replacements? On the same leg, on the same right leg. How long has this been? This is uh, the second one will happen on 25th of November, 21. And I'm still working with the sick. Leg. And you believe Jesus to heal you? Sure, I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus, you can hear me, yes? Look at me. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I bring you life. Life to your limbs. Life to your body. Supernatural strength right now. In the name of Jesus. You want to walk? Try walking. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, stand by hand, guide her. Two hip replacements. Look at what Jesus is doing. How about you, my dear? What happened to you? Had accidents on the same leg uh, several times. You've had accidents on the same leg? Several. Ten times. Can you see how you can see how satanic this is? Do you think this is a coincidence? Over ten times. The, they have done surgery twice, but the the, the bone is lying parallel. Parallel. It is not joining. It's, it's not joining. Yeah. Look at me. You believe in Jesus? Look at me. Don't worry about what you are holding. Go walk. Lift it up and walk. My dear, do this gently, carefully. Are you watching a miracle happen here? Look at this. She was even afraid to do it. Before. You couldn't do it before? Yes. My God. Hallelujah. What, what happened to you? I had, a, I, had, I had a accident, I fell and broke my Please bone. stand up. In the name of Jesus, let me rebuke the spirit of accident. Everyone here, please listen and be very sensitive to prophecy. I'm praying prophetically over everyone here. If there is any programming of darkness that you will be a victim of accidents, let it be cancelled here permanently. Let it be cancelled here permanently. Let it be cancelled here permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. Very touched by their stories. How do you have accidents in the same place so many times? More than 10 times. Yes, ma, I'm listening to you. And the, the lab bone got broken. So there was no money for me to go for, for surgery. But last year, September, I went for surgery. You went, oh, you are the woman who gave a testimony here? No. Okay. I went for surgical operation and they operated, but this right leg is already shortened. But they said they will still do another operation to straighten the bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be a supernatural miracle right now. 
in Jesus name would you want to walk move Koinonia celebrate what Jesus is doing now I use these three people as a point of contact that in the name of Jesus everything that is broken damaged that needs a supernatural replacement let it be replaced right now let it be replaced right now in the name of Jesus let's celebrate them as they return back to their seats hallelujah let me just minister to one more one one group of people that the Lord is showing me here I'm seeing someone who I don't know if it's that you pass out like you literally faint is a situation where you feel dizzy and then I mean you can feel weak sometimes you can pass out is there someone like that very quickly when if I do mention your case and you are you know that is your case please do indicate very quickly so we don't waste time we have a lot to do this is what God is showing me someone who just gets dizzy whether you are outside or inside you can indicate so that you come out here very quickly very very quickly that's your situation H how long for let, like, um, let them come three years now or for, more. okay how about you my friend where are you from I'm from Edo State okay as a matter of fact three Sundays ago I passed that while I was ministering on the altar you were ministry you're a was, pastor yes sir and you, you fell down? Yes. They had to give me water, but to the glory of God, I still finished the message. But mm. well, is that not, you see several people outside? Our mother here, how long, madam? My own is often, always. Small thing like I used to go out to preach. I'm a pastor also. Are you seeing? Are you see what the devil is doing now? I used to go out for preaching. Small thing yes. from here to here. I will. My body will be. It's like I will faint. I will fall down. So I will stop preaching. I will go back home. Let me hear from this woman. This mama. Sister, I'm having high BP, and I have from my waist to down. I could not walk at times. I'll be feeling dizzy. I cannot do anything. You see, the thing I love about the Lord is with one revelation, it can solve several people's problems just like that. How do you come and what you are seeing out of the many cases here is people who are passing out or being weak or all of these kinds of things. I'm about to pray for you. This is a miracle service. Our assignment is to end the workings of darkness. You can see how the devil is trying to disgrace and embarrass pastors, disgrace and embarrass people. This mother is saying that she goes out for evangelism. That is not a good portrait of the, that is not a good marketing system for Jesus. When you are ministering and you pass out on stage, it's like the devil trying to bring mockery to what you are saying. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you now. Place your hand on your chest. Let me rebuke that devil. I can assure you and give you this information for free that a spirit is behind it. In the name of Jesus, even as the Lord has revealed, I stretch my hands over everyone here and every spirit, every demonic force that is behind this, this, this situation, I speak as one sent by God in the name of Jesus let God's people go now out of their lives now let God's people go now whether inside or outside release them now in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every one of you be healed from these seizures now in the name of Jesus I want to pray for this woman, this fair mother. I'm seeing the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama, don't be afraid. But I command that devil to release you now. Out of 
her now. I shall not die. Play the strings for me. Believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I shall not die, but leave and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. You're a man of God, a pastor yes, with your own church. No, sir. You are under a ministry? Not yet, sir. I was invited. I go for outreaches. I have a healing outreach. I go, I visit different hospitals. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. I don't know you, but there is a mighty anointing. God is going to use you very mightily. Stand up. Two things. You have to manage. You see, when it has to do with ministry, you have to trust God for grace to choose the right association. Good people can be destroyed with the wrong association. Are we together now? Yes. And, and this is already a prophetic word, maybe for a man of God. You are as good as your association, not just your heart. You can be a sincere man of God intending to do ministry with integrity, but join yourself with wrong chariots and wrong people who will begin to push you to do things that at the end of it, you will find out that it is not Christ you are revealing. But let me pray for you because God is put, I know that we are here to pray for this issue, but in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. What's your name? Are you a pastor? Yes, sir. Marvelous. Yes, sir. Who is Marvelous? I'm the one. What is your name? Full names. Ezra Willie Marvelous. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Marvelous. May the Lord do wonders through your life. Amen. You will do ministry with integrity Amen. and the Lord will use you mightily. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Please place your hand on this lady, this one wearing a black, anyone ushers, just place your hand on her. In Jesus' name, I command this spirit that is holding this girl's destiny, release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that every plague of darkness and of sickness, recurrent sicknesses, what God says to one, he's saying to everybody, if there is anybody here with a plague of recurrent sickness, I declare be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Be seated for a few minutes. The miracle service is already on. Hallelujah. Okay, let me respond to this now. You see, the thing about the water has been stirred is that once it is stirred, it's stirred. There is a family God is showing me. Nobody is working. One of you got a job, but they drove the person away eventually. Where is that family? It's, it's like there is a spirit. Intelligent people love God, but it looks like nobody is working. No job. Please make sure you listen to what I'm saying before you come out. You belong to that case. Please come out quick. Your word is coming right now. Come out quick. Nobody in your family is working. Please listen to the prophetic word. And for one of you, you got a job. But for some reason, I'm seeing that this is... This is a wicked manifestation of the activities of ancestry. Come. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. you get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, my friend, this man? 
I'm from Benue State, sir. Benue State. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Ah, God is going to visit people today. Yeah. Honestly. Listen, I want you to believe that as I speak over your life, believe that you will return with a testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see so many people, there will be a rain of jobs. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing that I want to release upon your life. And you will marvel. You heard the testimony of that woman. If someone is America, this is a PhD woman who is there struggling, opening boxes. And a prophetic word comes, she puts her prayer request, and now she's working with Jeff Bezos. What is it that God cannot do in the name of Jesus? Let me pray for those in front, but you can stand maybe for your loved one. You can stand for someone you know who loves God with all their heart, but it looks like these doors have not been opened. In the name of Jesus, those of you in front here, I'm going to declare an anointing upon you. A mighty anointing will come upon you and you will return with your testimony. Right now at the count of three, those in front, I will have my kapat kotokotopa. I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare supernatural jobs. I break the circles of stagnation, career stagnation. I command those circles. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. I release supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, for some of you, it will not be up to three days from today. Write it down. I'm telling you by the God who sent me, my God will surprise you. Applications that you may have written for years that no one has called you over in the name of Jesus will schedule favor on that wise for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone I'm seeing here, you work with civil defense. Civil defense, you are not part of civil defense. Is there someone like that? I just got a prophetic word. The Lord is telling me you are up the balcony. You are somewhere in the balcony. Please verify. You work with civil, who is that person? Run, because the door, a mighty door is about to open for you. I will pray for you, but the person I'm seeing, you are wearing like lime or green up the balcony. I know what I'm saying. Just listen to me. Is there someone like... Who is that? Where were you sitting? Let's organize this now, please. Um, some of the leaders, please. Ho Please bring her to the front. Let me talk to you. My dear, give her the mic. Look at me. You had a dream some time ago and you saw this thing. Yes, sir. If I'm lying. This afternoon. Huh? Even this afternoon. What happened? I saw myself like, like an award in the office. I want to pray for you that's because what God is about to do in your life will surprise you. That's why I brought my ID card. Oh, that's why you came with your ID yes, card. Sir. That's why I brought my I told my friend sitting here. The lady of purple, I told her this afternoon. Where is I the friend? Her, look at her. I told her of the dream this afternoon. Please, if you are not the friend, don't come here, please. Let's, please, please. Huh? Okay, don't worry. For sake of time, give me the ID card. Let me tell you the truth. Koinonia, hear me. We are in the days of his power. Believe this when I tell you. We are in the days of his power. You see why it's good to come to the house of God? This has nothing to do with a miracle service. Once your heart is opened. Civil defense. How do I stand here and know that someone has been praying, had a dream? There are things you cannot fake. No. My dear, I'm praying for you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ because the kind of lifting that God is bringing will surprise you I prophesy may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus I hold your passport fire let that grace come on you now take that grace now in the name of Jesus there is a grace for visibility there is a grace that can cause people to know you are there as I've released it upon this lady let that grace land on someone's destiny May that grace rest upon someone, rest upon a business, rest upon a ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, by this as a prophetic contact, let an anointing rest upon your life. You will come and testify in Jesus name this is the lady that came here first no no hold on this this you are the one who came here you work in civil defense yes, too sir. Civil defense. and you too madam yes, sir. okay yes, sir. how long have you been there I've been there for 10 years sir. 10 years what of you 10 years too. 10 years two of you yes. 2012 yes. father who is that my friend why you work in civil defense too? I'm not it's okay it doesn't matter whether I'm not saying if you walk you this is just a word for them. Doesn't matter where you walk, God is going to lift you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold on. You it was not too long ago you left UBA. Who is that? It was not too long ago you left UBA. UBA is a bank. Who is that person? God wants to change your story now. For those I have prayed for, you, the, the first set who came, God bless you, please return to your seats rejoicing so that we'll hurry up now. Do you know I've not given my charge for tonight and you must hear the charge. Praise God. Faith comes by hearing, you must hear the charge. Please come, UBA, is there someone like that? I'm not saying you are walking in UBA, you left UBA. Where, when did you leave? 17. 2017. Yes, sir. How about you? 2020. I want to pray for you. My people from civil defense, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are wiping the tears of men. You are changing people's stories. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. May the Lord surprise you. Amen. Who came from Katsina? Katsina. I just saw that name Katsina. When you find that person, please don't tell lies. Huh? Please stand here. I come from Katsina, sir. Huh? What, what's she saying? Mama, be patient, eh? We are going to pray. This one is word of knowledge. But since you have come, um, our mother is insisting that she's not well. We are going to, we have a section to pray for the sick. What is wrong with you, Mama? Diabetes. I have a partition. I have a... Okay, that's, that's all right. Let's just honor our mother. She's, she's an elderly woman. It's okay. Mama, you believe in the... Pa That, that's all right, Mama. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray for you. You came from where? From Edo State. Okay, don't worry. You see, she left a long distance, so let's, let's just forbear with her. You see, it's to tell you that people are desperate for the touch of God. Are we together now? So sometimes we're excellent people, but we need to allow... Sometimes this is an elderly woman, and as far as she's concerned, whether it's a case or not, I mean, you don't do it, but at least since she has done it, let's honor her. Father... In the name of Jesus, we pray for... No, 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 please, Mama, stand. We pray for our mother. Let there be healing. Yeah. Hypertension, diabetes, every demonic thing will cause you right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mama, we bring you life, back pain, every pain in your body. Let it go right now. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's celebrate Mama as she goes back to her seat. Where is the person from Katsina? Katsina. Yes, sir. Hmm. What do you do? I'm police officer, sir. 
I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. I'm not a prophet of doom, yes, but I want to pray for you because yes, I'm seeing them wanting to drive you because a pistol was missing. This is what I'm seeing. You understand? Yes, I'm yes, not. Go, I'm seeing that you, you, like gone. Your yes, rifle yes, sir. could not be found and you could not account for it. Yes, and this is a demonic thing because there is something God wants to do. I know you are a police officer, but there is a mighty man of God that God is training in you. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. God is, you see our police officers, there are, there are many people who will rise from the force. Write this down as a prophetic word. God is going to be, right from their academies, God will start raising mighty people, mighty people. So I want to pray with you. You too, my friend. You came from Katsina. I came from Kogi State. I resigned from UBA Bank okay, last year. Okay, our UBA people, okay, I'll pray for you. I don't know why God said UBA. You see, when you are working with God, just obey. You, it may not make sense why God, there are many banks, and I'm sure everybody wants, what you do is whether the word applies to you directly or not. You can, once your faith connects to it, you can return with a testimony. In fact, do you know I can prophesy to someone and the person I prophesy to may not even receive the miracle because of unbelief and someone who connected by faith will come back with a testimony. That is God for you. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, my friend, I pray for you that the devil will not orchestrate an event that will indict you. There is a woman who is watching from Joss? Your son is a drunkard and you are tired of his situation. I'm seeing that mama crying right now as, as you are following. The Lord is saying I should tell you that in your lifetime, you will see God turn your son's life around. You are an elderly woman, you are watching from Joss. Your son has a problem with I think, and this thing has brought you a lot of pain. It's as if you gave birth for sorrow. Can I extend that prophecy for every mother here? In the name of Jesus Christ, for every mother here or anybody standing, any of your sons that the devil is trying to hijack, whether through drunkenness or any kind of addiction, here at this miracle service, we break the power of addiction. We break the power of addictions. We break the power of addictions. In the name of Jesus. So I pray for you, my friend. You go and return with a testimony. In Jesus' name I pray. And for those who left UBA, I don't know why the Lord asks that I bring you up out, but in Jesus' name I stretch my hands towards you. I decree and declare. May the Lord himself, by this prophetic word, shift you to the next season of your career exploits. Whether you currently have a job or not, I'm speaking to you prophetically. Return with a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I wasting your time? Please don't feel bad, but there are two women. The Lord wants me to pray. Ordinarily, I would not call them to come out, but the Lord is instructing me. Young ladies, you had, um, you lost your pregnancy and you are even here with your husband and the Lord wants me to pray for you. This is something that happened, I don't know, maybe, maybe a few months back or so. And you are here with your husband. Come. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is too good. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because... Don't be afraid. I know you may cry, but it's a word of hope. God is not asking you to come and stand here to disgrace you, I assure you. He's asking you to come because there is balm in Gilead. This is a miracle service. I will worship him forever. Allow those who are coming to come. Husband and wife, come. 
to show you the kind of nonsense that the devil is trying to do over families but we declare that the devil is a liar there will be a massive celebration of miracle children don't sit back if you are in this category God is calling you I will worship him forever love him forever because hallelujah listen the first word is a word of comfort please look up the Bible says remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old you see when God gives a prophetic word and please our global family learn from this when you are operating prophetically number one you have to know that prophecy brings comfort prophecy exhorts this is not just a display of spiritual gifts these people that God is bringing, you will be surprised that some of them right now, if God does not step in, their marriages may tear apart. Unfortunately, because of the kinds of cultures that we come from. For some of them, when there are prolonged issues like this, there's, there's bound to be conflict between the man and the wife. So when God calls them like this, it is number one to let them know that he's aware. The Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. Let me comfort and encourage everyone here. We stand as a ministry in love and partnership and in prayer with you. But let me tell you, whenever you are having any challenge as a couple, there's no such thing as pointing your fingers to say you are the cause or you are the cause. When you stood at the altar, you agreed that two of you have become one. Are we together? So if the wife wins and the husband loses, they lost. If the husband wins and the wife loses, they lost. It is only when they win together that they truly win. Let me ask the ladies if you can, as a point of contact, just place your hand on your stomach if you can. And then I want to pray for you now. Remember not the former things. The Lord God of heaven is going to bless you right now. He will make a way for you. He will be your guide. Holds you closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Let me rebuke the spirits that are masquerading behind all of these demonic things. Father, I stretch my hands right now. If there is anyone here that behind these manifestations of darkness are evil spirits, unclean spirits, yokes, curses, all kinds of ordinances, I stretch my hands over you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. I speak to you in the name of Jesus like prophet Eli spoke over Hannah according to the, ah, I'm seeing fire this is what I'm seeing I'm just seeing fire move over people Satan the Lord rebuke you release them now release them now release them now release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now I stand in partnership with the Holy Ghost and I declare be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful the Lord gave it as a command we stand as a ministry and enforce it over your life and as I'm praying for these ones anyone in the congregation who is trusting God for the miracle of fruitfulness fire is falling in the name of Jesus, I declare, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Whatever the medical condition is, we veto it by the word of God. And we declare, according to the time of life, go and return with your children. And for those of you trusting God for twins, in the name of Jesus, we release twins. Those of you trusting God for triplets, in the name of Jesus, we release triplets. 
you will think it's a joke till you stand to dedicate them here so shall it be in the name of Jesus there is one of you here I'm seeing a spirit always appears to you and this is something that also happened to your sister they tell you they have visions where wicked spirits appear to them who is that person in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every foul devil that will not allow you enjoy your marriage in the name of Jesus we declare a separation right now a separation right now please return back to your seat rejoicing Hallelujah. Hmm. Going on here. You are here and your business is not working at all. I'm not, I don't mean you are rising, you are managing. It's like there is an attack. I want you to leave your seat and run and come and stand here. God wants to surprise you. Please listen to what I'm saying before you come. Let's be orderly, let's be obedient. You will not be down except this anointing let me tell you the truth you what will happen you will marvel and wonder at the lifting power that is in the name of jesus if you are if you are in any of the overflows just move to your leds you may not be able to come here those outside you can just move to your leds and connect by faith don't say it does not matter this is why god has organized this to attend to the issues of people hallelujah make sure that whatever business you are involved with is not a business that kills steals and destroys are we together yes we're not going to waste our time praying for people who are doing demonic things we, we, it's important that your value that what you are doing is adding value to people and not something that is destroying lives but I want to release an anointing upon you you will be surprised honestly are you ready father you have anointed us for this purpose there are people here who have cried there are people right now as I speak you have gone down like it's not you are owing to the millions tens of millions hundreds of millions it's not business that will bring you out it's the prophetic that will bring you out I strive to move from left to my right in the name of Jesus at the count of three receive a baptism of the grace for excellence one two three take that grace now take that grace now Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release you. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Listen. Every business that has died here, hear ye the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, I command come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Anyone here who is in debt, you are owing banks, you are owing financial institutions, you are owing and there is no way you can come out. I call upon Ebenezer, the God who helps men, and I declare unto you, come out of that financial situation. Alas, master, for it was borrowed, and he said, where fell it? I'm speaking to you again in the name of Jesus. If there are wrong people in your business, I take them out now. And the right people who need to join your chariot, I bring them in prophetically. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. I place an anointing on these hands. Go and excel. Go and excel in the name of Jesus. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing.
the power of God is coming on someone but it is not for you I'm saying that is for your brother but you are only receiving from him he's not been promoted for nearly 10 years this is what I'm seeing he has been working I don't know where he's working but there's not been promotion at all do you know what it means to be in a place and you're just marking time there I don't know who that person is whether you are here in the main auditorium or outside but in the name of Jesus you don't have to come out the son of the living God I decree and declare that the anointing of the spirit lands upon your life and let there be supernatural pro promotion for your brother in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ mercy mercy I'm hearing the name mercy mercy please sit down please sit down koinonia sit down for a minute mercy who is mercy mommy some of you have been coming out for everything make sure that make sure that please faith 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 does not function in disobedience Listen, faith does not function. Faith in one word I have taught you is obedience. It doesn't mean you have to come out to receive. Some people can even come out here, I've told you, and see go back and nothing happens. So please, let's be orderly so that it doesn't mean that once a case is mentioned, whether it concerns you or not, mercy. If you are standing in for someone, please go back. Make sure you are the mercy yourself. Hallelujah. I want to deliver a family of mercy from witchcraft. Hmm. This thing has tied people in that family down. Sincere people, but they cannot rise. When I begin to minister deliverance, one of the things that God is going to be taking from families is this demonic cloud of limitation that does not allow people to rise. It looks like the moment someone begins to rise, something just stops him. I will first pray for them, but that prayer is going to extend to everyone. Mercy. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands now. The Lord, the, this is why God brought you out here. There is a mighty deliverance going to happen. Father, every covenant that is connected to ancestry or any legal access that Satan has over the family of mercy that gives him authorization, I come by the blood and I declare right now, let that yoke be broken now, broken now broken now in the name of Jesus Christ be delivered right now yokes of ancestry spirits of backwardness that keeps taking people back be delivered now please help our mother be delivered now hear me for all of you who have come forward I push you prophetically go forward go forward and as I'm praying for them, I'm declaring it over someone. Go forward. Go forward. In your life, go forward. In the name of Jesus. Like people will say, you take one step forward and then you take ten backwards. That is not the destiny of the believer in Christ. For the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. Is that in your Bible? That shineth brighter more and more. I'm saying it again to those of you here. In the name of Jesus, whatever has held you down, I prophesy to you, go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Let me take one scripture. Then we'll begin to minister deliverance and then with healing. Hallelujah. I was going to give us a charge. I will still do it for a few minutes on the power of expectation. Please write. The word is very important because that is the basis for the believer's faith. Your faith is only built on the word the power of expectation what is expectation i wrote here a strong belief 
that something desired or anticipated will happen. Expectation is a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen. That's what we call expectation. That something desired, something anticipated will happen. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24, very quickly, Proverbs 10, 24, the Bible tells us that the desire of the righteous shall be granted. That the desire of the righteous, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that one of the benefits that comes with being in Christ is access to your desires granted. Desires, of course, that are in line with the will of God. In Mark 11 and verse 24, Mark 11, 24, Jesus was teaching on faith and here's what he had to say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, he says, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. I like the Amplified Version's rendition of verse 24 because it now brings perspective to it and it says, for this reason I am telling you whatever you ask for in prayer. In fact, one of the Amplified Expressions says that it is consistent to God's will. It says, believe that it is granted unto you and you will get it this this expression of amplified says most believers please listen most people not know that expectation is a law it's not just when you do not have expectation you can cripple the hand of god from being made manifest in your life there is the law of expectation and that expectation is very very powerful hallelujah in first john chapter 5 i believe from verse 14 and 15 apostle john in his epistle said and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will it says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatever we, whatsoever we ask it says we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him so god responds to the expectations of the saints this is very very important the bible is full of men and women who communicated desperations and expectations in the Bible and returned with testimonies. And the Bible is also full of others who trivialized the whole idea of expectations, even to their detriment. Many believers may wonder why you can be in such a strong apostolic prophetic atmosphere and yet surprisingly walk back with nothing because usually the problem is your expectation. Let me show you two examples. In Acts chapter 3, from verse 1, very quick reading, Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, verse 2. A certain man who was lame from his mother's womb, the Bible says, who was carried, that they laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. So he would ask alms from the people there, verse 3. He says, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, acts and arms. And then the Bible says, verse 4, that Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Now, verse 5, the Bible says, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. You can give heed to people in sarcasm. Well, let me see if they, I can get one or two things. But the Bible says he paid rapt attention, expecting to receive something from them. Hallelujah. And then you know the end of the story, down to verse 11. The Bible says at the end of it, the man was, was healed, and it was something that the people wondered. When you read verse 11, the Bible says that the people were greatly wondering. It became a sign and a wonder because of expectation. Example number two, I like this one. In Mark chapter 10, I think the, the story begins from verse 46. This is a popular story of blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says that they came to Jericho, reading to 52, and as he went out 
um, of Jericho with his disciples. Follow closely. A great number of people followed them. Then the Bible says that blind Bartimeo, the son of Timeo, sat by the highway begging. 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Expectation. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 48 now. The Bible says many charged him that you should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49. The Bible says, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he called thee. Now, watch a very interesting conversation that transpired. And he casting away his garment. In other words, I know I will never have to need this garment again. And he threw it away. The Bible says he rose and came to Jesus. Now, Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I do unto thee? That would look like a, a very sarcastic question. What would you think a blind man would be desiring from you? It would be a costly assumption to assume that the man wanted his eyes to be open. Jesus looks like a, at a blind man who had already stretched his energy in shouting. And instead of him to just lay hands on him, he says, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the man said, the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. The man at gate beautiful was not wanting healing. He wanted money. Is that true? The Bible says he was begging for arms. In other words, the apostles, I don't need to rise. Just give me money to take care of myself. Keep the scripture there. 50 now. The Bible says, verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, demonstrated to your expectation, had made thee whole. And the Bible says immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. I like the end of that story. He did not receive his sight and he, then he went back. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Jesus told him, go your way, but he followed the way. Go, you receive your sight and go back. But he said, no. Now that I've received the sight, I want to follow the one who gave me the sight. Are we together? So there are many examples where people opened up their hearts to be expectant. Listen, this is a very powerful law. By the grace of God, having ministered to people through the years, I have seen how people trivialize expectations to their detriment. You will be surprised that in such a powerful atmosphere as this, there are people who may just come based on invitation or just based on the ritual of honoring a ministry's program and they sit down, they celebrate, they enjoy, they laugh, they jot down key points and go back receiving nothing because of the absence or the bankruptcy of expectations. Now, let me show you the danger of not having an expectation. Acts chapter 12, please. For sake of time, we'll read verse 1 to 5, then we'll jump to verse 12. This was a story about um, Peter, when Peter was bound in prison. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too. He says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3, he says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4, he says, and when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, watch this. Peter therefore was kept in prison. He says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the church came together and they began to pray. Peter must not die. Lord, rescue Peter. And you would think because of that dissipation of energy, they had expectation. Let's go to verse 12 for the sake of time. When you read from verse 6 to 11, the angel of the Lord comes and then brings Peter out. We've read it many times here. Verse 12, watch this. 
and when he had considered the thing the bible says he came to the house of mary the mother of john that was where the prayer was going on whose son name was mark where they were gathered together praying reading to 16 13 now the bible says and peter knocked <laughs> at the door of the gate a damsel came to hearken to him named rhoda 14 and when she knew peter's voice she opened not the gate for gladness but ran in and told how peter had stood before the gate don't forget this was the man they were praying for verse 15 and they said to her thou art mad but she constantly affirmed that it was even so and they said it is his angel can you imagine that verse 16 but peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door they saw him and were astonished that means while all that prayer was going on prayer changed peter you must go out of that prison they did not even believe there was no expectation that their prayer request came to their door and knocked they opened it and closed it back and said let's keep praying that's how many believers are father in the name of jesus i know you will turn my life around you will change my story and yet there is no expectation you would see these people praying a prayer group a prayer chain praying in the house of mary and yet peter delivered by an angel in response to their prayer he now came to the door it was not a vision peter was knocking the damsel came opened the door shut it for gladness returned back and told them stop praying the answer has come they say no we don't believe it just let him keep knocking now if peter went back in anger they would conclude from that prayer meeting that god does not answer prayers could it be that there are people here whilst you came here and singing dancing celebrating shouting amen but the truth is that you do not have definite expectations if the lord jesus were to stand on this pulpit right now this stage he would ask you the same question he asked blind Bartimaeus: what do you want me to do for you god i'm tired of my issues that is not an expectation that is lamentation remember that's what happened in john chapter 5 to the man at bethesda jesus said what would i do for you he started complaining i have no man that's not what jesus asked him what do you desire that is the reason why you see we guide people by writing prayer expectations is a way of helping to articulate your expectations lord i am trusting you to open a financial door i am trusting that in the name of jesus christ this and that would happen many people do not have expectations and it's the reason why it looked like god does not reveal his outstretched arm towards them hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 paul admonishes us in hebrews 11 and verse 6 saying that without faith it is impossible to please him he says for he that cometh to god we've dealt with this in this house the bible says he must come believing number one that god is meaning he exists and then number two that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words you come here whilst you are seated celebrating what god is doing already there must be a definite expectation within your heart whether you are following online you are following here on site across all the overflows outside you must make up your mind that i am not just here to waste my time i have expectations and you see an expectation that cannot be articulated is no expectation at all what do you want god to do for you general lifting there's no such thing as that that statement already is both a sign of spiritual ignorance and then the fact that you are not prepared to receive anything. Are we together now? Yes. So faith, I wrote here, is expectation that is based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. That faith is expectation based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. It's impossible to say you have Bible faith without expectation because faith must be connected to an object, expectation. There must be something definite. Hallelujah. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. 
tonight many of us have come and sadly many are here and even though you've seen the power of God move already there are many people who are without expectations and the Lord put it in my heart as we step into this second session of the miracle service that without an expectation sadly you may return back with no testimony at all because expectation is a law if it is bible faith it must be connected to specific things and specific areas where you want god to visit you i wrote a list of things here that represent many people's desires and expectations number one marital issues number two diseases and sicknesses the things that plague people that necessitate an expectation three financial situations of all kinds Number four, demonic oppressions. Five, the need for restoration. Six, direction of all kinds. Breakthroughs. Deliverances from all kinds of yokes. Every time you see a people gathered unto God like this, these usually are the issues that represent their pain that represent their expectations and until you are able to articulate it you look at anything in your life that does not reveal or reflect the glory of God you now connect Lord I trust you and I release my faith that this situation must come to an end for instance I mentioned by the Spirit the case of people maybe having financial issues here you saw the number of people who came I was very impressed it is a terrible thing to not know what is wrong with you it is a terrible thing to not even know what you need are we together now that's why the Holy Spirit guides us when we come so that you will know when your word comes and so that you will know when to receive and to manifest your testimonies Your testimony will not pass you by. I wrote finally here that every genuine expectation is expressed in words and action. Please write. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words and actions. Expectations that cannot be expressed in words and in action is not expectation at all. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words. Words there means you must be able to pray it and you must be able to take the necessary steps as required for victory. Every genuine expectation. Now imagine those who were just healed and delivered just like that. Did you know that if their word came as it came and they did not come out, maybe they just sat down saying, well, it's none of my business. You will be surprised that with the power of God moving up and down, it will pass them by because they did not, God will not force his power on you. I hope you know that. I'm saying this because when we begin to pray and we begin to minister deliverance and minister healing and so on and so forth, and then more importantly, your prayer request. No matter how accurate God has granted the grace, we see in part, we prophesy in part. This is why everybody is given the liberty to write your prayer request. Please let me encourage you. Don't get so used to just writing and submitting your prayer request. It is a very powerful tool. It is a way of guiding you by the Spirit to clearly articulate your expectations. There are things you may not have the courage to say here. Imagine how embarrassing it will be if I call you and I say, tell us everything that is your expectation. Some will be personal. There are things that is between you and God alone. That's why we write it and we pray over it here. And from here, it is burnt. It is nobody's business what you have written. Are we together? That means you should not spare when writing the things you are trusting God for. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, you are a man of God and ministry is not working. No doors opening, souls are not being saved. You write it. Father is supernatural breakthrough in ministry. Write it clearly. I have a son. What is his name? John. John does not seem to be a disciplined gentleman, write it. Supernatural restoration for John. I'm showing you how to prepare. You write it both in your heart 
and then on paper so that when we begin to pray as the power of God is coming it is resting upon your expectation and turning it into a testimony you can return back and know that this happened to me and you can return back to testify I wrote this Jesus did this look what my life has become now when Dave was here taking the testimony he said there is before and after but that only happens when there is an expectation is someone learning yeah when I pray preparing for the miracle service or any other service for that matter I have expectations myself as a man of God even for the meeting some are revealed by the Spirit some come as my sincere desire to see God's people blessed and these expectations are reflected in my prayer my prayers as I prepare for the meeting Lord bless your people for instance two major expectations is healing and financial breakthrough this has been my major expectation and my prayers for God's people because this is what I have discerned that Satan is using to cripple his body these two things one sicknesses of all kinds extending to demonic attacks number two financial problems you will be surprised to see how many believers are stranded financially and let me tell you the truth for as long as God has anointed us but I'm not somebody when I am I'm dealing with issues that help believers to rise I'm not ashamed of it when you are blessed and you rise it is a joy to Jesus to the purposes of God and even to me for as long as you are under this ministry you will not be poor let me tell you the truth it's true you will learn the ways of the kingdom but you will also receive the engracings and the prophetic backing that it takes to rise are we together healing and finances these were my major areas doesn't mean we'll touch on other areas but these two areas that means by the time we begin to minister in this second session when you hear me speaking and declaring over your finances shout a loud amen and receive it with all your heart don't be like the foolish man who stood at the gate of Samaria and, and was trying to mock the prophet Elisha that even if God will open the heavens, might this happen? And he said, you will see it, but you will not eat of it. God is changing the stories of men. God is surprising people. You see people come and they're testifying here. Healings and even financial miracles. That is not all God can do. He will respond to your expectation. For someone you are here praying saying Lord I cannot have five boys ten boys and none of them has risen as their mother I'm still feeding them age 40 age 50 age 30 that that demonic oppression must stop and God comes to you for someone maybe there's no peace in your home you love the Lord but it's as if there is there is war always happening in your home father I need peace you are the Prince of Peace bring peace to my home and you'll be surprised while you are here the husband and wife can be here and the fire of God just falls upon them an altar call is made and you see your husband coming to give his life to Christ and that begins the journey of total transformation maybe you're a man of God who loves God but there's almost zero anointing on your life and your ministry you struggle on the pulpit and it looks like God did not call you you can bring that to an end the anointing is transferable graces are transferable apostle I'm here I love the Lord but I don't even know what I'm doing on earth I'm just escorting men around the corridors of their destiny I need to find my place do you have it as an expectation an expectation is more than a wish a wish is a careless desire with no consequences whether it is actualized or not an expectation comes with dogged faith attached to it Lord I'm, I'm committing your integrity on this matter Archbishop Benson in the of blessed memory said if your faith says yes that God will not say no because if it is Bible faith it will be based on his will so there is no reason why God should say no are we together Apostle I'm tired I've been married 10 years 15 years no child well I'm sure that God will open my womb that kind of as that that is a careless you know very very shabby wish it will not happen that way 
father in the name of jesus i thank you this is my miracle service i connect and i declare that in the name of jesus by next miracle service i'm already pregnant i release my faith you believe and while you are saying it the devil will be mocking you and saying is that not what you said last miracle service has it happened now you need to learn how to forget about the devil when you are dealing with god don't allow him come and interrupt your conversation with God. You are talking to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the ends of the earth. Don't let Satan come and interrupt your discussion. Father, I know in the name of Jesus that I can complete this house. I've begun this building project as it is now. I may be stranded, but in the name of Jesus, you have told me that this year of open doors, that in Jesus' name, I will dedicate my own house. While he's saying it, here comes the devil. He will whisper all kinds of things and say, just to remind you for the records that you lost your job last month, and just to let you know that right now as it is, they've increased the school fees of your children. Before you know it, you will take your attention from Jesus Christ and you are listening to the devil. And at the end of it, your, your prayer request will make you, you will just be reduced from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the flesh. How do you know you have come back to the realm of the flesh? What you were once confident upon will look like stupidity. You know you are being reduced back to that realm. Lord, I'm trusting you for supernatural partnership for my ministry. And then eventually you say, ah, but use your sense. Who will come and give you one million, 10 million, 100 million? The devil has succeeded in bringing you down. The Bible says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit. That to be spiritually minded, he says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Is someone learning now? I want you to come and li listen, you do not know the joy that is in my heart when people come to stand here and testify. Because testimony is the end product of the manifestation of faith. That God's word has finally delivered unto me. And now you are declaring to the nations that he's faithful. You are declaring to the nations that he's dependable. You are my God. That's what happens when you declare that you are my God. Regardless the limitations, I prevail by faith. You are my God. Despite the cost in the family, now I have the children. Listen to me. Believers, hear me. If you do not believe that God is able to to step in for you then just know that you are wasting your time as you're seated here don't make up your mind father I'm not going to be the one just catching people as they fall I'm not going to be the one watching people as they say amen and some of you the lack of expectation even appears physically a word is coming in the name of Jesus and you just stand and you're seeing somebody receive you know just verbalizing this is my word and you just stand watching wow and then when it looks very powerful, you just lift one hand and say, Amen. You will never receive like that. God is not a fool. Are we together? Expectation has an attitude. They said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them, expecting to receive. When Elisha was going to receive from Elijah, there was an attitude. If you can see me as I'm taking up. Some of you have come here to access mantles and to access graces. Don't sit down and, and your ministry is dying. Whereas there is a plethora of graces you can access. And rise to a position where you are of value to the kingdom. Don't be a man of God as if you are not anointed. But it's your expectation. A word can be coming. Oh, the healing anointing is coming. And, you, and that is really what you need. Let me tell you the truth. If you're a man of God, the sick are not healed through your hands. Oppressed people are not delivered. Lives are not being changed. Can I surprise you? Even if you're a good teacher, especially in Africa, believe me, there will be limitations. Because in ministry, it is the message and the backing that go hand in hand. If what you are communicating is truth, it must be backed up with signs following. And for any genuine ministry, people must hear and see the workings of God. In Acts chapter 8, when you read from verse 5 down to 8, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. 6 says the people gave heed to the things which Philip spake, hearing 
and seeing the miracles that he did that means he said Jesus is able to do this and he demonstrated it Jesus is able to lift and he demonstrated it Jesus is able to wipe away tears and he demonstrated it so it is my desire that you are a man of God here a minister of the gospel do not just yes you may come to receive healing or whatever it is for yourself but among the many things you should not forget to carry is the grace that produces that result are we together yes whenever I have the privilege of meeting genuinely anointed people especially fathers of faith I'm like a sponge I don't go there saying I'm anointed too I search especially spiritually what are the graces that I need for this level in my life that are not yet at work in my life? And any opportunity God grants me to connect, I connect by faith. I was so touched with the testimony of that redeemed, that precious redeemed pastor. That was already a man of God, a pastor. And that's the problem, especially with most people. You feel I'm a pastor too. We are all men of God. I have taught you. You never receive having a colleague mentality. He was at the redemption camp according to his story. Already. And God gives him a word and then he takes that risk to empty his account. Now look, a landowner in Lekki, the mainland, and I can tell you that is only child's play compared to what is coming. Results happen by steps of faith and then graces that work. Don't forget this. When the grace for something is on your life, you cannot but produce the results. These are not cunningly devised fables. Whilst you are seated under this atmosphere, even if you are not sick in your body, even if you are not trusting God for any financial miracle, even if you are not trusting God for any breakthrough, do you know that you can become a living, potent career of certain graces? And I told you that graces are not silent. The career may be silent, but the grace will not be silent. No, graces make noise. When grace, a grace is upon your life, you cannot but manifest. And I'm praying for someone already. In the name of Jesus, every grace that is missing but required in ministry, in business, every grace that is required but not yet at work in your life, may this be the season you will carry it. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are many graces that are available for believers. And, and, and you see, every time, when, when I speak like this, I speak passionately. There is no need to struggle. We have done teachings on the body of Christ here. It is foolishness, I'm telling you, when, when you refuse to open up your heart to receive the graces that are available, especially when you're in abundance of it. It's like somebody crying for Hallelujah. Of God, respectfully speaking, he just reached me and we're laughing. He said, Apostle, I heard that when you open up for volunteers for the UK conference, there were about 3,000 people. That, that is enough for a conference on itself. And this will, how do 3,000 people come together in another land? Are we together now? In another land, 3,000 people to be volunteers, to be the workforce, not the people coming for the conference. It is not pride, it's a grace. And you can carry that same grace to your shop. You can carry that same grace to your ministry. Are we together now? Yes. It is my prayer that sooner or later, God will help us to see the value of impartations. Your Christian experience will be barren in many regards. There are many of us here, and, and I, I say this from, from a heart of love. If one person having a crutch, one person alone is healed in your church or your ministry or your prayer group, that one healing alone can bring you tens of partners to come and stand with you and say, we believe in what God is doing. You're not going to be able to do end time ministry being powerless, bankrupt of graces. You speak over people, they don't shout amen because they know that shouting is wasting their time. There is a track record of you making a lot of noise with no result. Everything mocking God in your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, it dies at this miracle service.
Hallelujah. No, you should not be ordinary. You lay hands on people. They are even looking at you frowning because they believe that nothing came on their head and they are right. Since I laid hands on you, what happened to you? Absolutely nothing. In fact, I went down. I was even better before you laid as as soon as your hand came on me I, the remaining part of the breakthrough now went down your life must change your life must change your mind must change your mind must change your life must change. Your life must change. How do you know you have access grace? The results. The results. The results. What suddenly happened to your shop? Man of God, where did you go to that God is drawing as many to be saved? I used to know you as an ordinary preacher. While you are preaching, you are sleeping. What came upon you that now you are communicating the word of God with fire and precision, with signs and wonders following? I met a man of God who, I think he was around last week or week before last, and he shared a very touching testimony. He said, Apostle, I used to struggle so much in ministry. I would open my Bible and literally be frustrated on stage. And he said, one time I came, I don't know for which of the services, and I received an impartation. He said, when I went back, it was fire. Now, what surprised him was that most people in the church did not even know that he came here. But to his greatest shock, he said he started seeing his worship team literally reflecting like our people here. He didn't tell them, oh, this is the thing about impartation. The spirit you contact is what begins to work. You contact excellence, you will be surprised. The most disorganized people in your organization, something starts bringing them together. They do not even know where you went to receive an impartation from. Please believe what I'm telling you. Graces speak. They looked at Peter and said, these are unlearned men, but they discerned that they had been with Jesus. I'm saying this because we'll be rising up shortly. And I want your hearts to, if you are sick, trust God to step in for you. But among the many things I'm praying that will happen to us is this area of healing, this area of financial breakthrough, and then impartation. Don't be limited, my brother, my sister. Refuse to be limited. You are a prophet and people are still doubting. Are we together now? We who are not even prophets by office are prophesying more than you. It's not, it's, not, it's not a competition. I'm challenging you. You can rise to a level of the prophetic with uncanny mastery. That you speak the counsel of God and nations who stand still. Because they have learned that you have leaned your ears to the heart of God. And that when you say you heard God, you really heard. How about some of us here who are jumping up and down saying we are kingdom financiers? You've not supported the, the program of God with one naira because the devil has seen that you have a heart for God and he's fighting the resources from coming. It will take more than business ideas as important as that is. There is a forceful dimension of the prophetic that can push you into your Goshen. Hey, uh, hey, uh, uh, uh. Hey, hey, hey. There are many gifted people who the world does not know of and it ought not to be so because you see the Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel listen to me it is not a manifestation of flesh 
when you desire sincere visibility for the purpose of the kingdom without visibility and influence the nations cannot know you are there it's not by trying to market yourself you are lifted by grace there is a hand that lifts men and puts them in a position where the nations know that God has lifted you now it gives you the platform to serve the purposes of God many of us are frustrating ourselves trying to manipulate ourselves into visibility it doesn't happen that way when that grace is on you you can be in a cave and yet from that cave God will raise men to look for you now I don't know what your expectation is tonight but for the next two or three minutes I'm going to allow you with the Lord Jesus Christ verbalize your expectation please open your mouth and cry to the Lord that which you desire him to do in this miracle service please pray Someone is verbalizing his expectation. The expectation of the righteous shall not be caught short. Man of God. What do you desire the Lord to do in this season where the wave of his glory, the wave of revival is sweeping from nation to nation? I repeat to you again, we are in the days of his power. We are in the days of his power. We are in the days of apostolic signs and wonders heralding the end time move of Jesus across the nations. Businessman, what do you desire that God does in this season where he's raising men and giving men the wealth of nations to frontier the purposes of the kingdom? Shut up, Alakas. One more minute, don't be silent. you're a man of God I like you to declare I'm tired of doing ministry without genuine power tired of the difficulty experience in calling many to Jesus drawing many to Jesus oh for they need to come and come in their multitudes we are in the days of his power. My Bible says the people shall be willing. Few more seconds. Hallelujah. Listen, maybe one day when we have the opportunity and we're teaching, I will share with you a bit of my story and how I sought for and pursued some of these graces that God has so graciously made available today. In as much as God has granted me the privilege of encounters with Jesus, I can tell you that there are many graces that are upon my life today 
that did not just come from that one encounter or those encounters there were times in my life when I had to review my life with respect to God's expectation for me and I had to search by knowledge by mentorship and by revelation the graces that will be required for my efficiency I am still a seeker of those graces up until today and I began to intentionally meticulously search for the graces that are responsible for producing genuine ever increasing results I submit to you again that struggle will never end until grace comes on an individual many people you, you can have a semblance of results you can jump and keep gyrating if the results are not there it is because the grace is not there it's as simple as that so I want you please hear me do not be distracted because I trust that by God's grace I will be speaking from the depth of my spirit and for God's sake, I'm praying that somebody will, even if it's for the first time, that you will open up your heart to carry something, something of substance. And it doesn't matter whether you are male or female, doesn't matter whether you are young or old, doesn't matter whether you are sound or on sight. The most important thing is your faith. Make up your mind that ministry will not be barren again. Make up your mind that you will not be around rigma rolling as if God did not call you. Make up your mind. You're not the first to do what you're doing. It is the bankruptcy of the grace needed. And you may say, I have an anointing. Is it for the level you are stepping into? Yesterday's anointing will not command today's results. No, sir. Hallelujah. Can I start with an impartation? It's going to be a very quick walk tonight. Even if we don't have time to get to take testimonies, no problem. Let me start with an impartation. Listen to me. I want to start with impartation for ministers of the gospel. Everybody will receive, but particularly, you are, you are a minister of the gospel, let your heart be open. I want to release a grace upon you. Ministers of the gospel, it's time to to this powerlessness in the church. If we do not drive it away by the introduction of genuine graces, the purposes of God and the program of God will suffer. I call upon the God of my covenant, and in the name of Jesus, I declare for everyone called into ministry the mantle and the grace needed. Take it now, take it now. Take it now, take it now, take it now. The grace needed for efficiency. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear me? If you are a prophet here, may your eyes and your ears be opened. Supernaturally. May a mantle come upon you, male and female. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The healing anointing I'm seeing fire coming on the hands of people I don't know who you are but drink of that fountain in the name of Jesus Christ drink of that fountain a new wave of the healing anointing a new wave of the healing anointing I release it upon you I, re I release it upon you take that grace now signs and wonders I shift you into a ministry of signs and wonders potent signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ that through your hands the blind will see through your hands the deaf will hear through your hands cripples will walk in the name of Jesus Christ hear me every dimension of the gift of the spirit that is missing in your life but required for your destiny i'm telling you i'm seeing like candles i'm seeing candles in the spirit and fire is coming on those candles this is what i'm seeing it looks like acts chapter 2 and verse 1 that pentecost fire let it come upon you now that pentecost fire let it come upon you now pentecost fire
fire with proof in your spiritual life. I'm still praying for everyone, but particularly ministers of the gospel. The spirit of revelation, superior illumination into scripture. I tell you, men and women will teach scripture like never before. The word of God will open up to you. You will communicate doctrine and the mysteries of scripture with precision and exactitude. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace, the spirit of revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Every altar that has been barren of power from any man or woman of God here in the name of Jesus return back to your various stations with fire return back to your various stations with fire in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Let's do the finance one now. Father, it is your desire for your people to prosper. Even in this season. And many of them have come from situations right now where except you help and show mercy. Certain financial doors may not seem to be opened. But in the name of Jesus, you have orchestrated this service for the mysterious lifting of men. Therefore, the grace component required for your financial exploits, receive it now. Hmm. Hmm. Receive it now. Receive it now. Hear me? There are many of you by reason of this impartation, a strange order of wisdom is resting on your mind superior strategies superior ideas in the name of Jesus Christ and every spirit of lack and poverty that has followed any family here I don't care for how long it has been I arrest it now in the name of Jesus I arrest it now in the name of Jesus I arrest it now in the name of Jesus hallelujah please be silent I want you to bring all the people who will be under the anointing now just be silent you don't say you've prayed this is the instruction God is giving me I want to rebuke certain strange spirits that have held on to certain destinies and usually I will ask you to shout but the Lord is giving me an instruction to be silent in the name of Jesus father even as you have instructed everyone here and every family here under the influence of wicked spirits yokes covenants aha uh -huh, in the name of Jesus Christ I'm telling you there's there's such fire that is moving in the name of Jesus let there be deliverance for such people supernaturally please bring them out whether for individuals or families very quickly men and women everything that has tied your progress i decree and declare right now be released be released be released please bring them out my god fire is falling in this place bring them quickly ancestry yokes of darkness you may not even know that is the cause the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit something is leaving you I'm seeing someone like a chain around your waist let it be broken let it be broken let it be broken let 
Kepata. Let it be broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. It happened to your father. It happened to your mother. It happened to your siblings. The blood is speaking against it now. The Apakosh Ketepata. The blood is speaking against it now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please bring them out quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the Lord is saying he's opening graves. I don't know what this means, but in the name of Jesus, every family here that has been tied down by witchcraft and ancestry, I stretch my hands, fire, fire begins to burn everything that is not of God. Bring them out. Let it destroy the works of darkness. Let it destroy the works of darkness connected to ancestry, connected to the spirits of the dead. Be delivered now. I'm still praying. Please be sensitive. This is a very prophetic moment. Sanakos kedila sobe shalakros kevaniata engroto so deba lakusia. Every two two years, someone must die in that family. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing deliverance. Someone must die. Where are those people? The power of God is coming on you now, right now. I break that chain of that pattern that pattern of death. Break now! Break now! Break now! Break now! Anyone here appointed unto death that the devil has vowed that you must die this year. I don't know where you are. But in the name of Jesus, I want to rebuke that influence over your life. And I hope you know that as you are standing here, you can stand in for your loved ones too. Wherever they are. Spirit of death, I speak to you. You know my voice. Anyone whose destiny you have hijacked, release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Negative and demonic dreams. Seeing yourself in the past. Past schools. Writing exams that never finish. All kinds of satanic things. Everything that connects you negatively to yesterday. Be set free right now. Please help them. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Hear me. The Lord is asking me to repeat this same thing again. You go to bed and you see yourself doing things you had done before. Levels you have left. According to scripture, believers don't go backward. We only go forward. Every spirit drawing you back. I break you from their influence now. Let me tell you this, hear me. 
I hope you know I used to have those experiences myself before. You've heard my story. As a man of God, though, not just a, an, an ordinary believer, I used to have those experiences where demons would come and press me and all those things. I would shout Jesus, shout Jesus, nothing will happen. That is why when you see me ministering deliverance to people, I do it with passion because I've been a victim of oppression. Again, let me speak to someone. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have tried, and yet nothing has changed. In the name of Jesus, this night, be delivered permanently. 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 Hallelujah. Don't be tired. I'm seeing in a vision. This is what I'm seeing. The hands of people tied. How can a man move like this with your hands tied? How can a man move like this and walk with your hands tied? I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, let fire from heaven. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. You may even have a job, yet your hands are tied. I don't know whose hand is tied or whose destiny is tied. At the count of three, shout Jesus and your deliverance comes. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be delivered now. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a door. And I'm seeing many people queuing in front of that door. And according to the vision I'm seeing, trying to force the door to open. And some are even crying. And I'm seeing people dropping, like dying. Yet that door is not opened. I believe that this is a sign of advancement or retrogression that doors and I believe that this line represents families and even generations that have stood there are doors that have limited families that they say nobody can pass through this door you can go abroad you can school like this our dear woman the professor that came to give a testimony let me open that door prophetically I taught you at the beginning of this year that there are three ways doors are open number one is by the use of the right key number two is by knocking the ministry of men but number three by force and power let me use number three because when those doors open they open from their foundations i decree and declare every generational door that has closed parakatos yata i stand and as an apostle of the lord jesus christ let that door be open now i break that door now i break that door now I break that door now generational doors be open be open be open Efata, be open be broken in the name of Jesus Christ You will be surprised to see what happens to you as a result of this miracle service. Hear me? You see, when a door is open or broken, the most important thing is that the right of way has been given. You will begin to see mysterious advancement happening to you. In the name of Jesus, for all who are in front here, I declare prophetically that God who has located you, you have come out by the anointing, the spirits that oppress you, I declare the count of three in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. They release you once and for all. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. One, two, three, go, go, go. Release them now, out of their lives, never to return again. In the name of Jesus. The sun sets them free.
and we declare as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ they are free forever they are free forever they are free forever in the name of Jesus please hear me I told you that I have discerned that among the many things that God is doing is bringing health and healing to his people and also bringing financial stability you see the teachings that I've been bringing. These are not just teachings that are coming carelessly. Because one of the things that the devil has released upon the body of Christ, please hear me, is death through sickness. Mysteriously, people just wake up and you find out that there are diseases you cannot account for. Are we together now? It is our responsibility to be able to discern what heaven is doing and to be able to communicate God, God's intent for his people. So this prayer for healing, we may not have time for testimonies because our time is gone. You can always register your testimony, but I want to pray with you. Listen, if there is any loved one you know in your life who is sick, please, as I'm praying, connect with them so that they don't die for nothing. And for those who are connecting from any hospital, our teaching hospitals, private hospitals, now is the time. It's incredible how people connect from hospitals and release their faith. Please connect. We're, we're, we're talking now under the influence of the anointing. Lay your hands on your chest. If you have a medical report, bring it out. I'm about to pray. That devil must let you go. Must let your children go. Please place your hand right now. I want to minister the life and the healing power of Jesus. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. And then we'll pray. Praises to your name, O oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Place your hand there. I sing praises to your name, O oh God. Praises to your name, oh God, for your name is great and greatly. We lift your name. As I pray for you, I shout the name of Jesus. I want you to thunder a loud amen. Let the devil and let that sickness know. I told you expectation must be expressed in words and in action. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command every spirit that is back of any infirmity in the name of him who died and rose again. I speak as one sent from God. May that spirit leave your body now. That devil of infirmity leave God's people now from America to Europe, to South Africa, to Kenya, to Zimbabwe, to Ghana, to Lagos, to Abuja, to Joss, to Kano. Let the healing power of God begin to flow right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus.
Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Blood conditions be healed now. Cancer die now. HIV be healed now. Blood conditions of any sort we declare healing right now. Blind eyes, partial or complete blindness, we command that you open now. Deaf ears, be open now. Anyone here suffering from the issue of blood, I declare be healed right now. Every demonic growth roaming around any part of your body there is someone fire is coming on you there's movement all over your body you literally feel things moving in your body from your head to your toe be set free right now there's someone you are having a problem with your heart in the name of Jesus be healed right now The Lord is showing me a woman in a vision. It started like having, you know how you have cold, maybe a flu or something, and then you lose your voice. But till now, your voice is not restored. This has, this has become months, you know. Most times, people just take maybe lemon, warm water or something, some, you know, and, and then eventually their voices, their, their, the sound returns. But for this woman, your, your, your voice refused to return back. So you speak as though you are whispering. It's a demonic thing. I restore your speaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a woman, you are laying your hands right now. You are in this place. You are laying your hands upon your daughter, your little baby. There's been a mysterious sickness. You don't even know why. She's losing appetite. She's not eating. She's not, not sucking, not doing all of that. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that little baby be healed right now. Now, whether I've mentioned your case or not, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. The Lord is showing me a plot by darkness to take someone's father and mother the same day. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. A mysterious sickness just destroying both of them, like in this, not accident, like that, just, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, we extend their life to its fullest. You will not lose any of your loved ones again. Therefore, be healed, be perfected. There's someone you have, your own is not heart palpitations. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm just sharing what the Lord is showing me. Your heart is not pumping blood properly. This is what is wrong with you. I may not know the, the medical name of that situation, but it makes you dizzy. It, it, um, I mean, it's, it's like the, the case that I mentioned earlier here. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. Whatever blockage is around your heart that extends to your veins, your arteries, whatever is stopping the normal blood flow to supply oxygen to the body, in Jesus' name, we declare supernaturally, let there be healing. Let there be healing. There's someone the Lord is showing me every time it's, it is rainy season you have boils come out of your body like boils sores come out even you know various areas of your body that discomfort you seriously I don't know who that person is but this year we exempt you from that experience in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus now everyone you're going to be praying in the spirit for the next one minute while you submit your prayer request let's do it very quickly ushers let's have the prayer request please bring out your prayer request our global family now is the time to forward your requests just pass it to the last person by your left or right to make the work easy for the ushers just pass it please if you need to pen down one or two things just make that snappy very very quickly 
Hallelujah. Make that very snappy. God bless you. Are you praying? Make sure you're not silent. Ushers, let's make it fast, please. Make sure we have enough people outside and then all the overflows. Those online connect by faith right now. You heard the testimonies. Hallelujah. Where is that woman who gave, that professor woman that gave a testimony from the Zimbabwe, America? Where is she? Is she here? Please let her come quickly. And then the pastor from Redeemed, that pastor from Redeemed that testified, two of them, please let them come. Submit your request very quickly. Let's have it very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. The pastor from Redeemed, please let him come. And then the professor walking with Jeff Bezos. Hallelujah. I want to speak over your lives, both of you. You came here, I just felt led in my spirit, not that we're trivializing, and every testimony is great, but the Lord put it in my heart. I thought I would do this privately, but the Lord asked me to do it now. Please, let's have the request very quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that both of you have acknowledged the power of the anointing. The, the, you can be gifted, but your gift must be anointed. To be gifted and to be anointed are two different things. To be gifted means that you have developed, outsourced, and even refined your value to be able to serve your world with excellence. But the assignment of the anointing is to be able to bring the spirit factor because James 2.26 says a body without a spirit is dead. Your gift is a body without a spirit. It can still be dead. And our dear professor, we're going to pray for you and release you with another dimension of grace that you will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God can do. And for our dear pastor, we don't know what parish you pastor or whatever you do, but you have come to acknowledge Jesus. The lands you bought in Lekki and the other one is child's play. That is just a test of faithfulness. God will grant you access to the wealth of nations. Now let me pray for both of you. I stretch my hands. We've been commanded to bless. And in the name of Jesus, this is a sworn blessing. It cannot be reversed. I stretch my hands upon both of you, using you as a point of contact to as many who desire to walk in this reality. God has lifted you. In Jesus' name, Professor, we pray. Let that grace speak for you. Amen. Go back and be marvelously distinguished. Even among your contemporaries, we elevate you by the anointing. And for our pastor, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you. A unique grace for wealth and prosperity, let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, as you declare the word in season and out of season, the Lord himself will bring such evidence to your ministry. I bless you both. Go and return with greater testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray. Give them a big hand clap. Thank you. Please stretch your hands and begin to declare over your request. Remember, I've taught you on expectation. I want you to begin to make faith declarations very quickly. I'm returning with my testimony. Everything written here will be returned as a harvest of answers. Lord... Step in, do the impossible, do the impossible. It's a prayer, Lord. Lord. Step in, do the impossible, do the impossible. Please let's be sure that everyone's request is here. I want to lay my hands on it. I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit and declare over this request. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I return with testimonies. Is someone praying? Is someone praying? Shabaraso koto prandas kalivereso dia parados. Ratabaraso do braske berento sidas. Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that every request here represented let it return to you as a testimony for many of you may it return faster than you expected I say it again may it return faster than you expected For some of you, your answer comes this night. Where you have been mocked in the name of Jesus Christ, may that mockery come to an end. Where men have said, where is your God? May God use your results to reply them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let fire fall on this request. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. By miracle service may. In the name of Jesus, you will not have to repeat anything you've written here. I stand upon this request and I decree and declare the same way I'm standing upon it prophetically. Everything that has risen above you to limit your life, I bring it under your feet. I bring it under your feet. I bring it under your feet. Now I declare over your life, favor like you have never seen. May that grace rest upon you. Favor like you have never seen. May that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, Koinonia, receive speed. Receive speed in one month. May God give you the achievement of years. In one month, I repeat, may my God give you the achievement of years. 
I decree and declare everything that has brought you down and covered your glory I give visibility to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ hear me the helpers of your destiny who have been anointed to locate you and to work in partnership with God for your lifting wherever they are I call them by prophecy to manifest in your life I call them by prophecy to manifest in your life hear me I pray for your various homes I decree and declare may your home be a tabernacle for the presence of God may your home be a place of fire and revival in the name of Jesus Christ and everything written as Ichabod in your life I decree and declare let there be a sudden restoration a sudden restoration wealth like you have never handled may my God bring to your hands in the name of Jesus I pray for your relationship with the Lord hear me hear me hear me hear me this is a very big deal not just for God but even in this ministry while it is true that we are concerned with the holistic building of every man it is important to understand that in order of priority the greatest point of emphasis is your spiritual health therefore I decree and declare your word study life your prayer life may fire come upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ fire like never before to pray fire like never before to fast fire like never before to pray fire like never before to fast your word study life a passion for the word receive it in the name of Jesus I recommend that you listen to my message get my teaching equipping the saints I preached it in Zaria the last time I visited there I, I visited them there please get it it's online it's on our, 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 our YouTube page Koinonia Global please make sure you listen equipping the saints there I teach on how believers are methodically trained and mentored into stature and maturity I spoke about the place of a systemic prayer life not just a prayer life I taught there that if your prayer life is not systemic, you can never be strong. You can't freelance prayer as occasion serves. There must be a systematized approach to prayer that produces results. And then your word study life. I showed three dimensions of your encounter with the word. Please get the teaching. It's available. Listen to it again and again for your spiritual edification. In the name of Jesus. Let me make my altar call now. This is one of the greatest parts of the service for me. I know you have tried, except you have to. Please let me ask us to remain standing, except you have to. Please, let's just honor this call, this one last time. I want to make a call for those who need Jesus Christ. I spoke on expectation. You know that you need Jesus in your life to be your Lord and Savior. Or you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I truly want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Whilst I heard you teach as I saw the miracles and the manifestations of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost began to convict me, telling me that I need Jesus in my life. You may be here in this auditorium scattered all around or across the overflows or from any part um, of the globe following. Our time is up. I'm going to count one to five. By now, there's no reason why we should cajole you. You know that you need Jesus. Jesus is not a matter of Christianity or religion. He calls us into an active, functional relationship. And you might be here saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. As it is, things have not gone right with my life. I want to make it right. I'm counting one to five. I'd like you to, in a hurry, run and come and stand here. Or you can stand in front of your LED screens and if you're following from across the globe I like you to position your heart as I lead God's people to pray I begin my counting now God bless you rush as you come one koinonia let's celebrate them
come. Two, someone is running to Jesus finally. 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 Three, don't say there are many people already. Come, it's a personal affair. The master calls you. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. It's never too late to make it right with Jesus. The Bible declares that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. The Bible then says, whoever believes in him, that he should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the gift that God gives all who come to him, even through Jesus. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Hallelujah. Come. When it has to do with Jesus, whether you are learned or unlearned, whether you are old, young, male, female, he calls us all the same. You can choose to sit back there ignoring this call. We have no right to force you, but remember, this is about you and Jesus. Give him a chance to make beauty and glory out of your life. I salute all of you who have made this noble decision to come to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in this prayer of faith. And you who is following from across the globe, following from your home, Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right with him. And as I lead these precious ones to pray, make sure you follow and then let us know that you just made that decision. You can contact our media team or our PR um, uh, team. The, the, the emails are there. The phone lines are there. Let's know that you made Jesus Lord of your life and you can be guided on what to do. For those of you who are in front here, may I request that you please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to this Jesus you have come to honor. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I believe in you as the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i make jesus lord of my life savior of my life and king of my life i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i declare that from tonight i am a child of god I go forward ever and backward never. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, based on the authority of scripture and upon your confession, I declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, we call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I declare that the grace to live the victorious Christian life is imparted upon you. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. Now, let me please request that you please move to my right, which will be your left. There are a group of counselors waiting to have a word with you very quickly, a minute or so, and then you'll be back to your seats. Let's honor them as they go. Let's honor them as they go. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a final announcement and we're done. Next week, make sure you invite everyone. I'll be sharing something very powerful here. But we'll be taking a few minutes into our service next week to just intercede for our conference that will be happening that week. Um, so we'll take the time. I'll be sharing with you a few things here. And then um, God would grant grace. For many of you who want to find out about the conference, our PR desk is there. You can go and meet uh, our PR people. They will give you every information. And then um, for our family in UK, we also have our lines there for PR. 
make sure that you contact them and it's going to be a glorious um, moment please make it a date whether you are there online or on site online is for everybody make sure that the whole world is connected to this conference all our social media platforms will be active we'll take the time to announce a lot more uh, and then hopefully uh, soon after the conference we'll now make announcements on a few other conferences lined up have you been blessed tonight thank you so much for your patience please rise as we wrap up the service i decree and declare that every declaration that has been made by god through his servant here tonight it will find expression in your life in the name of jesus the week beginning let it be for you a week of miracles in the name of jesus christ that by next week as many are standing here to testify you'll be among them in the name of jesus christ when we share the grace please do greet one another on your way out let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.